and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, Peter and the other disciples seem to have no trouble sleeping. Today is Transfiguration Sunday in the church calendar. It's the the Sunday before Lent when we think about how the very human Jesus went to that mountaintop with some of his disciples and he was transfigured before them. He revealed his glory. He shone like, like lightning. And while this is happening, his friends Peter and James and John uh, fall fast asleep. They awake uh, to see him there and they are speechless. Flash forward now to the end of Jesus' ministry and it's the Garden of Gethsemane. They have had the Last Supper. They have gone to the Garden and Jesus has told them to watch and wait while he prays. The soldiers are coming. Jesus is about to be be taken away to be crucified. And while Jesus is pouring out his heart to God and, and drops of sweat like blood are coming from him, what are Peter and the others doing? They're sleeping. They had no trouble sleeping. What about you? Do you have trouble sleeping? Can you fall asleep just like that? Uh, or do you toss and turn? You know, people... Uh, People are different that way. Uh, Much to Tammy's chagrin, I'm one of those people who can fall asleep just like that. And I, I regularly do all those things that you're not supposed to do at bedtime. I'll have a, a big cup of high test coffee and then probably also grab a Mountain Dew. Then I'll have a snack and another snack and yet another snack And then I'll go to sleep, and as soon as my head hits the pillow, I am out just like that and sawn logs. You might say that, uh, you know, it's a blessing or a curse, I don't know. Tammy thinks it's a curse on her. Uh, But there are times that that even us anti-insomniacs have trouble sleeping like when we're dealing with some big problems and our troubles are, are, are keeping our heads spinning and anxiety is welling up within us, then even for those who normally fall asleep quickly, there's no sleep to be found. Psalm 77 describes this. The writer's troubles has, has them worried and thinking and, and wondering, where is God? Has God forgotten about me? You keep my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked, Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? We just sang about God's unfailing love. And the psalmist here is saying, Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed at all times? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? You kept my eyes from closing. The psalmist is is sleepless because his head is spinning, thinking about all the, the troubles in his life. Have you ever lost sleep over all the things that you've had to do? Or you were wrestling with a big decision or the troubles of life just seemed to weigh down on you so much and the anxiety was so great that, that you just couldn't close your eyes and sleep. I know a lot of people must be going through that because there are so many articles about how to get better sleep. Um, you can... You can read Six Steps to Better Sleep from Mayo Clinic. You can read Getting a Good Night's Sleep from the National Institute on Aging. 20 Tips for Better Sleep from WebMD. And you've probably read some of them, and you know that 
they all basically recommend the same things. First off, get a regular sleep schedule where you go to bed at the same time and get up at the same time every day. Yeah, right. <laughs> Two, exercise, but, but not right before bed. Three, don't eat a lot or drink caffeinated beverages at night. Number four, use your bed only for sleep, not for watching TV or for looking at your phone. And five, is develop a bedtime routine like we do with kids and grandkids to get them to go to sleep. You know how, how those routines go. For kids, you brush, tell them to brush your teeth, put on your pajamas, read a story, read another story. Okay, just one more story. <laughs> Say your prayers, kiss and a hug, tuck into bed, get out of bed, tuck them back into bed, get out of bed again, tuck them back in bed, I'm thirsty, get a drink, put them back in bed, and then sweet sleep. A good bedtime routine can go a long ways to having a good night. And that's especially true for all of us if that routine includes God. Maybe that's why so many of the great faith traditions have a special time of evening prayer. Because when we close our day with God, it not only changes the way we sleep, but also the way that we live. Whether we find sleep easy or hard, it's always better if we fall asleep with God. In the Jewish faith, they, they pray three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. The Muslims pray five times, sunrise, noon, afternoon, sunset, and night. And the Catholic, Catholic monastic tradition plays, prays eight times a day, ending with vespers at sunset and compline before going to bed. Making it a habit to end the day by turning to God is a powerful way to shut down those voices that rob us of peace and to rest and get some sleep. Proverbs Chapter 3 says, When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked, for the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from being snared. In Psalm, Psalm 4, it says, In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell and safety. And Psalm 63 starts out by saying, You God are my God, earnestly I seek you. And then later it says, On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Did you see the pattern in there? When bedtime becomes God time, we can lie down in peace. When bedtime becomes God time, our sleep is sweet. When bedtime becomes God time, then we rest under the shadow of God's wings, held by God's hand with a song in our heart. One of the most powerful habits that you can develop is to close your day with some time with God. And you'll find that not only, not only does that make your night better, but it equips you to face the next day as well. So last week I challenged you to memorize some part of scripture or a prayer or even a song. And this week, I want to issue another challenge. The challenge for this week is to build a routine at the close of each day where you spend some time with the Lord. It doesn't have to be long, and you don't have to do it in bed, uh, if you like to kneel by your bed, uh, sit at the table, lie on the couch, lie on the floor, it doesn't matter. But make it a habit this week to spend some time with the Lord before you try to close your eyes and go to sleep. And if you need some help in getting started on that, then I've got three suggestions. 
First off, you can use a daily devotional like these. The, the upper room, our daily bread, there's lots of devotionals where for each day there is a, there's a little scripture, there's a prayer, there is a little reflection. You can get these at the literature rack uh, by the door as you leave. And the great thing about these is, is that you don't even have to think. You know, sometimes we are just so tired at the end of the day that we can't even think of what scripture to read or what prayer to pray. And these, it's all right there for you. Somebody else has done the thinking. And so you can use that and get started on your time with God. If you want to go further and, and have that just as your, uh, your introduction and then add your own prayers and have your own conversation with God, then that's great too. I mean, I pray every night after I go through one of these devotions. I pray for my family. I pray for all the things that I'm worried about. I pray for you all. And uh, I have to be careful that uh, I do all this praying before I lay down because uh, um, you just heard that I, I'm likely to fulfill Psalm 4, verse 8. I will lay down and sleep. So I pray while I'm still sitting up, and I pray for you. And it is a, it is a gift to spend that time with God. I use one of these devotions to get me going, and then I take it from there. Now, these are, these are great for starting the day off, too. How many of you use a daily devotion of some kind? Not just these, but some others. A lot of, lot of hands. Okay, you can put them down. How many of you um, do your devotion in the morning? Okay. H how about in the evening? Okay. Maybe a few more in the morning, a uh, few in the evening. Uh, some of you may do, um, do both, morning and evening, and that's even better. Um, but for this week, just make sure that at least you do an evening devotion with God, some time with God before you go to bed. Make your bedtime God time. Joshua says that, uh, that we should be meditating on God night and day. One, Joshua 1.8, keep this book of law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it then you'll be prosperous and successful. So you can use these devotions at any time, but commit this week to spend some time with God uh, before you go to bed. And they're, they're only a page long. I mean, literally, they take less than a minute to read. But that's all it takes to, to experience the power of turning bedtime to God time. However, if you want to spend a little more time thinking, spend some more time of thinking about the things of God than uh, all the stuff that normally troubles your thoughts, well, then I've got another suggestion for you. Lent is starting, and, and this Lent, um, our message series is going to um, be uh, connected with uh, this book uh, called Good Enough, 40-ish devotionals for a life of imperfection. So these are more than just a, a one-page, uh, uh, do-it-in-a-minute uh, devotions. Uh, and uh, if you would like to get a copy of, of this book, uh, you can get it, um, you can purchase it in the uh, coffee shop, or you can get it online. Uh, just make sure that, um, that it's the actual book. Uh, we ordered a, a case of these, and uh, we thought we were going to save a couple of dollars. And when they came in, it had this cover, but the inside of the book was like somebody's doctoral dissertation on uh, some medical thing. Uh, so uh, go to a reputable source and, and get your book. Um, you might remember that a, a few weeks back, um, I mentioned this uh, young seminary professor from Duke who had had stage four colon cancer, and uh, 
just at the time that life was uh, seeming to all fall in place for her, she had everything that she'd ever worked for and dreamed for, then she is struck with cancer. And uh, she did a TED Talk, but, but she and um, another, one of her friends, uh, Jessica Ritchie, uh, did this devotional. And, and this is a, a devotional, as it says, for a life of imperfection. Because we realize that, that life is sometimes messy, and we're not always going to be living our best life now. Uh, and yet, even in that messiness, even when you struggle with cancer or all of the things that we struggle with um, in life, still, it can be good. It will be good. Now, eventually, when we're with the Lord, as we say, soon and very soon, there'll be no more dying, there'll be no more all of these problems. But for now, life is imperfect, and we are imperfect. But God is good. So, um, I'd encourage you, if you want to, uh, uh, to add a little bit more, um, I don't know how many 40-ish is. Um, I do know that, that Lent is about 40 days. Uh, this is not put, put together where you, it tells you this is the day you read this like a daily devotional. You can read this at your own pace. Um, and, and besides, we say Lent is 40 days, but that's only because we don't count Sundays. And if you ever counted the days between Ash Wednesday and Easter, you'll get to 46. Because all those, that Lenten devotion is, is focused on the days other than Sunday because every time we gather on Sunday, we are celebrating and praising God. Um, not just looking at um, our mortality and our sinfulness, but we're celebrating God. So anyways, that's a second thing. And wait, there's more. A third way of experiencing the power of bedtime with God is to use those scriptures and those prayers and those songs that you memorized last week. Uh, to use them, because you can lay down. You don't even have to have a book. Just lay down, and if it's in your heart, you can speak those scriptures. You can pray that prayer. You can sing that song as the psalmist described the song as he lay in bed. And, uh, and if you want to go even further there, um, you, may, you may have memorized the Lord's Prayer, but how about if you use bedtime as an opportunity to introduce the Lord's Prayer to your kids or your grandkids? Uh, Pastor Adam Hamilton of um, Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City uh, he wanted to, to teach his, his uh, granddaughter, Stella, the Lord's Prayer. And since part of their ritual each night um, was to read stories, he wrote a storybook about the Lord's Prayer. And, and he published it. And it's the most important prayer of all, and it's subtitled, Stella Learns the Lord's Prayer. And the, uh, it's just a, a simple children's book. Just read you a couple of pages. Stella loved to spend the night with her grandparents, Mimi and Papa. She baked cookies and played games with Mimi. Papa told her stories from the Bible and tossed her on the bed while she giggled and squealed. After supper and a bath, she would have a cup of ice cream with sprinkles before it was time to brush her teeth and get ready for bed. Now, I like this bedtime uh, routine. <laughs> Uh, yes, just uh, supper, bath, and ice cream with sprinkles. Oh. And then brushing your teeth. Tammy would want to make sure that I, I point out, brush your teeth. My, my, my wife's a dental hygienist. so. Um. At bedtime, Mimi and Papa would take turns reading her stories about a cat named Pete or a monkey named George or a spider named Charlotte. And then came a Bible story, and finally, before they turned off the lights, they would pray with Stella. One night, Papa said, Stella, tonight Mimi and Papa want to teach you the most important prayer of all. It's the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, which is why we call it the Lord's Prayer. I know that prayer, Papa. We say it in church. 
Well, tonight we're going to talk about that prayer and what it means. And from now on, every time you spend the night, we'll say it together at bedtime. Is that okay with you? And Stella nodded. And it goes on to explain the Lord's Prayer in a way that a child can understand, clear up some of those confusions that the old language uh, always creates, like why God is doing art in heaven. And it's uh, it's just a a real simple little book. Um, A fun way for kids to learn the Lord's Prayer and to make it a part of their bedtime routine. And so we have these for you as well. So if you have children or grandchildren or nieces or nephews or neighbor kids that you'd like to learn the Lord's Prayer and make it a part of their bedtime routine, um, we've got about 100 copies of this out on the counter there. And if you're worshiping at home, um, you can just send your name and and address to dan at resumc.org and Dan will send you a copy as well. And if we run out of those hundreds, well, we'll get more. But how, how great would it be if a hundred families were learning and saying the Lord's Prayer together as a part of their bedtime routine? So it's a free book. Just pick it up and take it with you. Um, even if you have no kids at home and you know a neighbor that could use one or somebody else uh, in the family. Now, it may be easy for you to fall asleep or it may be hard. I don't know, we're all different. But either way, your life will be blessed if you turn your bedtime into God time. See what a powerful effect it can have on your life if you spend a little time with Jesus before you close your eyes. And if you can help share that with a, with a child, even better. Let's pray. Lord, here we are in the morning and it's a beautiful day and we're excited and ready to get on with, with all the, the things that the day holds in store. But as we draw to a close of this day, whether we've had great fun and excitement, maybe with grandkids, children, or whether we have walked through dark valleys of worry and wondering where you were, Lord, may we spend some time tonight with you and receive the peace of your Holy Spirit that makes our rest sweet, allows us to to know that you're there even if we can't see you. God, thank you for being with us from the brightest morning to the darkest night. Thank you for all that you give us. In Jesus, amen. So this next song...